In the last 300 years, we have discovered the laws that govern the universe, and all but the most extreme conditions. I think there is a reasonable chance that we may find a complete set of laws by the end of the century if we don't blow ourselves up first. If we do find a complete unified theory, it will be a great triumph, not just for scientists, but for ordinary people as well. In time, the unified theory would be simplified and taught in schools, at least, as an outline. Then, everyone would have some idea of how the universe works. that distant galaxies are moving away from us. This means that they must have been closer together in the past. In fact, one can show that all the galaxies must have been on top of each other about 15 billion years ago. This was a real big bang, not a beauty thing that took place on the stock exchange couple of years ago. It was the beginning of the universe and of time itself. Anything that happened before the Big Bang could not affect what happened after. So we can neglect events before the Big Bang and say that time began at the Big Bang. After the Big Bang, we believe that the universe expanded in a very rapid, inflationary manner. Again, this inflation in the universe quite puts modern economic inflation in the shade. An increase of billions of billions of percent in a tiny fraction of a second. A second is the time between two heartbeats. I'll tell you what a second is. Inflationary period, the universe borrowed heavily from its gravitational energy to finance the creation of more matter. The result was a triumph for the economics of Keynes. A vigorous and expanding universe filled with material objects. The debt of gravitational energy will not have to be repaid until the end of the universe. In our theories, there are two kinds of time. There is what is called real time. This is a kind of time that is measured by a clock. The time that we feel passing, the time in which we grow older. Then there is imaginary time. Of course, imaginary time is an idea that science fiction writers, like Arthur, have used in their stories. But imaginary time is also a well-defined mathematical concept. It can be thought of as a direction of time that is at right angles to ordinary, real time, in a certain sense. The universe has a beginning in real time, at the Big Bang. And it may well have an end, if it collapses to a big crunch. But in imaginary time, it has no beginning or end. Rather, imaginary time is closed in on itself, like the surface of the Earth. The surface of the Earth doesn't have any beginning or end. I know, because I have been round the world, and I didn't fall off. Individual particles can travel through imaginary time, and arrive back at an earlier real time. 